the history of housing policy in Japan. Before the World War II, the rental sector was the norm in cities. In the country, uh, they lived in their own houses. But as they came to the city, they did not build their own houses, but rather they rented. And so that was the norm for us to uh, live in a rental house. But after the World War II, uh, because, partly because the all, almost all the housing were destroyed by the war, the government wanted that people will build their own houses. So the, the construction of the houses was used to uh, boost economic growth. The ownership was encouraged. The Housing Loan Corporation of Japan uh, was established in 1950, and this was uh, particularly uh, use, uh, effective to, to persuade people to build their own houses. They have given the mortgages, and the, the interest rate was kept lower with the tax, uh, subsidies by taxes. And also, a five-year plan for the housing uh, started in 1951, help to improve housing situation. Every five years, the plan was uh, revised and uh, the outcome was uh, examined. And first, uh, the five plan was just to increase the number of houses. But as it tam time went by, it just came to the, the stage when the quality became the most, more important issue. And then the problem for, uh, of housing for seniors. In the older days, uh, in, uh, in a traditional, like in a traditional society, the extended family was the norm in Japan. And with uh, the space, fairly spacious landlord in, uh, for the dwellings, we had a special room for our respectable seniors or the, we had built the granny annex in the land. So they lived together. So they are, in a sense, helping each other between the younger generation and the senior. But with the nuclear family becoming the majority in cities, a uh, different strategies was sought. This was uh, more urgent because uh, after the World War II, Many youngsters came to work in cities, and job opportunities were in the cities, not in the, uh, the country. They had to come and live uh, in the cities, which meant that seniors are up very far away from the youngsters, and those who came to the cities as youngsters get older, but then we had fewer children. So they, unlike the previous uh, custom of an extended family living, we have to think of the nuclear family living. So first, the special dwelling units for seniors, like sheltered housing, uh, were uh, sought about, as uh, the, those types of dwellings have been uh, established and uh, utilized in the Western countries. But as uh, time went by, it became evident we have more seniors, larger number of seniors compared to the younger generation. So that means that we need some other thinking, not special housing, not special designed housing, but more universal designed housing where they can age in place. Uh, so I will give you some uh, the fact about rapid aging in Japan. In the older days, we assumed that seniors are an exception. But in the year 1986, uh, the, there was a forecast that people 65 and over will be about 25%. A quarter of the population will be in the year 2030. And that this forecast actually got higher and higher every five years. So this is uh, the forecast uh, uh, that was done in the middle of, uh, 90s. And you will see uh, the, at the top of the, the figure, 
you see the dark blue line, which started in 1950 from just 5%. One in 20 were uh, 65 and over. But in, in the year 1970, it crossed 7% level, which means that Japan has came into the, the aging society. And in 1994, we crossed 14% line, which means we are in the aged society. It continued to rise. And the forecast at that time was that uh, we will have about a third of the population will be 65 and over. And many European countries started at around the level of 10% of the population, but much slower with slower growth, they will arrive roughly 25% level in the year 2050. Some of the countries uh, rise very sharply. And two examples are South Korea and China, who are uh, roughly 30 years later than Japan, but with a very similar sharp rise, reaching about 25-30% in, uh, in the coming year to come. And rapid aging in Japan, the new, newer data, reality in this year, 65 plus, uh, age and over are now 25%. One in four are seniors, with, uh, as against the previous expectation forecast that in 2030, it's 2013, so very uh, rapidly aging. And the more rec most, most recent forecasts mean that more than 35% will be 65 in 2050. More a pessimistic uh, forecast is that not a 35, but nearly 40. Here I have given the, uh, the data about Australia, and Malaysia, and uh, US and Sweden. And Japan is very sharp rise and keep very high. Uh, Australia and USA is somewhat similar in the trend. And Sweden is uh, in between. And Malaysia, the developing countries, they are still going into the level of roughly 15% in the year 2050. So how to prepare for the future? With the forecast of the, uh, 1986, the many Japanese ministries asked the Ministry of Finance to give funds for uh, uh, policy measures. And the Ministry of Construction, which was uh, the mother ministry of the Building Research Institute of Japan, where I uh, belong, ask for the money. So pre to prepare for the future built environment, they got money for five years. And for the buildings, even before that period, the designing for disabilities of the built environment was somewhat visible. And some uh, targets were visible not accomplished, but what must be done was fairly visible. But as to the building uh, for, uh, to cope with the aging was not so evident, but particularly with the dwelling design. So that was from cradle to grave. So that's what I wanted to tackle for my own generation not for the seniors at that time, for my own generation. And also, <coughs> that with the other group, research group on the urban design, they try to solve issues for the external environment, <coughs> accessible uh, and usable streets and buildings. 
not just for people with disabilities, but growing number of seniors. So the outcome for dwellings. Uh, it was, uh, uh, so the outcome was dwelling design guidance toward an aging society. Not for the aged people, for the aging society. It was compiled in 1991 and 1992 as a draft. First for multifamily dwelling, particularly for the public rental housing, and for detached houses. Those are more for the owner-occupied housing. After some, it took a few years to finally complete the draft but officially issued in 1995. It acquired momentum in 1996 with adoption by the Housing Loan Corporation of Japan. The guideline. We recommended three basic ideas. No level differences inside the unit unless it is uh, vitally necessary and the uh, handrail installation at several places where the, you, are, uh, st uh, you are not stable, like taking off the shoes or changing clothes, and wider corridor and doors to accommodate temporary use of wheelchairs within dwellings. We take off our shoes inside the dwellings, but uh, still we may need wheelchairs for frail seniors with uh, temporary reduced ability. So that's what we wanted to introduce. Previously, from the living area to dressing area to wet area in the bathroom, we have the wet area outside the bathtub in Japan. But uh, to go there, we have two level differences. So that and this photograph is not and for an ordinary housing. This is a special accommodation for frail seniors. Before the, uh, the insistence that no uh, level differences be in place in uh, housing for particularly for seniors, even housing for seniors had level differences. And no one questioned about this problem. So what uh, we introduced was Level, no level difference from dressing area to uh, wet area, water channel. And this is for the, the detached house, prefabricated housing. But, but in 1990, this was built in 1997. So the, after the adoption of the housing loan cooperation of the three basic ideas, uh, the housing providers change the, the standards of design so that the flat entry to bathrooms will be available. And as to the toilets also, we try to in install handrails, if possible, from the beginning. Because if there was no handrails, but the seniors became more frail, they may not say that they need handrails. That, that's what I wanted to avoid. Requirements by the Housing Loan Corporation of Japan in 1996. Uh, be during those, uh, just before that period, the Housing Loan Corporation of Japan, which is a government, uh, semi-government body, was severe attack by the private sector banks. Because after the burst of the bubble, the private banks sought after where to rent their money. And they realized that the housing mortgages is the most secure way of investing the money rather than to invest to the private sector, speculative office, etc. So the Housing Loan Corporation of Japan was a kind of obstacle to be removed. So private sector banks attacked that the housing loan corporation can be abolished. In order to fight back, the housing loan corporation of Japan 
and also the government officials insisted that they will uh, go along with the government housing policy. So design for aging, energy conscious design, and high durability design, those are the issues that they will ask for the new uh, application and possibly with a little bit lower interest only for those uh, housing, uh, those applications uh, complying with these requirements and the others will have a little bit higher interest rates. Maybe we do not have the government subsidies by taxes. So preferential interest, interest rates and also, if they install, uh, they introduce some of the additional features for design for aging or the energy conscious design, they may get extra money. So that's a couple of uh, things that the Housing Loan Corporation of Japan wanted to introduce, or uh, introduced, as against the public sec uh, private sector. And uh, the interest rate difference actually was very minimal. And my suggestion was that they should have the interest rate bit difference between one, uh, around 1% percent plus 0.5% percent up and po plus minus 0.5% po below. So that will persuade people asking for the mortgage money that they will uh, well, uh, willingly to accept the requirements for design for aging, uh, design, energy conscious design, and high durability uh, design, which actually didn't happen. And in the end, it, the interest difference is just 0.1%. Very, very modest. But still, some uh, work, uh, it's some, to some extent, effective. And complying uh, uh, the design for aging gained popularity. Because that's uh, with the changing the design standard, it's not so difficult to comply with for new construction. So though, uh, with the housing loan corporation statistics, more than 50% uh, of those who came for the mortgages are complying with the design for aging. So, as I said earlier, the requirements for design for aging was fairly easy for new construction, but difficult to modify of, for existing dwellings. And the government tried to induce some of the ideas, tried to modify the existing dwellings, but unfortunately that has not worked effectively. The, there was a government expectation that all the below standard dwellings will be demolished and replaced with new ones. This was coupled with the, 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 the effect of the Great Hanshin earthquake 1995. The government uh, would try to persuade people that you should do the examination of the earthquake resistance of the old dwellings. And if they uh, are done, do not comply with uh, earthquake resistance standard, rainforce, or rebuild. Unfortunately, not all older ones were demolished. Um, roughly about half of them still survive, and new constructions are built on the new site. Because we have been building uh, roughly more than one million dwellings each year which meant all the below structure standard dwellings will be replaced in 20 years, but which did not happen. And further policy move. Housing performance indication system was introduced in 2000. Th this was based on the housing quality assurance law. It's uh, in line with the product liability law. 
because we had the problems of poor quality dwellings sold and the builders disappeared. <laughs> so uh, the government was under attack and they tried to introduce a new law uh, to secure uh, the, the quality of the dwelling. And although it's not obligatory, um, uh, we've introduced a housing performance indication system. This actually worked better for the multifamily dwellings, condos, but not for detached houses, because the people are not still persuaded that they will live and die in their dwelling they've acquired. Not they go into the market again. Only if they go into the market, the quality, housing quality assurance will be effective. Then also we had the senior securing housing for seniors in 2001. This was introduced because the government, the central and local, has just gave up to provide public rental housing anymore, uh, ex except re uh, replacing the existing ones. The government money has, in a sense, run out to uh, provide public rental housing. So instead, they wanted, the government wanted the private sector build their own rental housing, but uh, the, the pro they will be secured that they are the, uh, the owners of the renters, uh, build, uh, rental dwellings uh, should be assured. The design guidelines, which was uh, originally the design guideline for dwelling for the aging society, was changed its status to the design guidance for dwellings for the, those for seniors for rental sector. So in a sense, the, it was assumed to cover every dwelling, but now it's more focused onto the dwellings for seniors. So it's a little bit backwards from my viewpoint. <laughs> but uh, on the other hand, it had the backing by the law. Uh, also, in the year 2000, we had the long-term care insurance for the aged. Uh, aged means 65 and over, except for some of the crucial diseases. Unfortunately, the lack of recognition of the importance of good dwellings uh, was in place with um, Health and Welfare Ministry officials. Or, uh, in line with that, with the officials of the Ministry of Finance, because they control the money. Unfortunately, so therefore, the long-term care insurance system, the money goes more to the human resources, taking care of peop uh, senior persons, frail senior persons. But if they just go away, and the next month you have to do the same thing. If you uh, remodel and mod modify and adjust the dwelling design to cope, for, to cope with the aging, the frailty, then that will become the, an asset for the dwelling. But this did not actually happen. Only a tiny, tiny portion of money are allowed for home modification. But most of the money goes to human resources. The forecast in the year 2002 was like this. So at this level, the, uh, the ratio of 65 and over in Japan was just above 35%. The securing housing for seniors did not go well. So the government had to revise the law in 2011. The ordinary intention was just to build rental 
housing for seniors, the dwellings only. But, well, uh, the, the problem of the difficulty in the seniors finding a rental housing is the risk of fire, rents not paid because of the fin uh, economic difficulties, and if renters pass away and no one to take care of afterwards, the owners of the dwelling have to take care of the funeral. Those are the, the issues that the <laughs> owners are rather reluctant to rent uh, to the, the seniors to have as renters. So system to reduce the problems I introduced. That is targets to increase service flats for seniors. So not just the dwellings, but the service will be delivered to the seniors. As, uh, compared to other countries, Japan has a relatively large number of institutions for frail seniors, but not the dwellings. So the, uh, the housing uh, laws to secure housing for seniors was targeted to that problem, but it did not work well. So the services will be linked with the dwellings. So that they will be built and packaged. So this is uh, the joint project by the Ministry of uh, Health and Welfare and Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transportation, which is a successor to Ministry of Construction, we are in responsible for the housing issues. So, <coughs> but whether it will uh, effectively be, uh, work or not, we have to see. And we see uh, some news media coverage that those service flats are not working well. The level of service is below what the government expected. So we must wait and see what you uh, develop further. So university requirements, are they enough? The three issues, floor without an unnecessary level difference. So you just go there, even if you are crawling, and support for hardware installation to secure your statue, as taking off the shoes and take, uh, changing the clothes, etc., or using the toilet, or you, uh, taking a bath, and with of crucial space dimensions, corridor, and doors. Unfortunately, those three requirements are not sufficient if residents become more frail. So how to include everyone to age in place? Should we in introduce higher level of design standard? Well, problem of course is universal preparation. Maybe some can be uh, solved by the introduction of assistive technology and some special made-to-order design adaptation will be suited a fairly large uh, some uh, portion of the population. We are not so sure to what extent these measures will work. But uh, anyway, we have to survive, so we need to do something. So at least those are the possible alternatives and possible solutions that we can and we should introduce. But we still don't have enough experience to do these things. So we are still trying. And I think perhaps it's, it's one problem with this design was that uh, the ventilation for the kitchen, the switch was very high above. So we have to arrange something if the person in the wheelchair can live alone. 
So this is the very minor problem that uh, could be, must be solved. And the, the other set of slides are for the accommodation are uh, public rental housing by a local government in Saga Prefecture in Kyushu. They wanted to build their dwellings in timber. So they uh, commissioned for several carpenters to design a build their own uh, proposal. But basically, they have the, uh, the flat and basically flat entry through the gate, entrance door, and then the uh, level, en level uh, floor within the dwelling. And those are the ones, not for seniors, public rental housing for anybody who are eligible. So this is the direction that is, uh, we are going to, and uh, local governments are trying very hard to accomplish that goal. So this is uh, their bathroom. Also, this side is the washing machine, and you go in, and that is the bathroom. So the one of the things that we have to think about in Japan is the disaster preparedness. We had a great earthquake in 1995. And we assumed that was uh, the one of the largest conceivable disaster we may have. But uh, the East Japan earthquake in 2011 had another uh, feature. That was uh, the, th the problem with the tsunami. Just nuclear uh, reactor accident put aside the tsunami. That uh, caused a very devastating uh, effect to the, to the dwellings. First, after the uh, Great Hanshin earthquake, Emergency shelter was completely non-universal, completely inaccessible. So people with disabilities and senior citizens had difficulty trying to cope with those situations. After we built temporary housing, those temporary housing were not either accessible. No flat access, very far away, and it was not visitable either. So to cope with the issues raised during those situations, public rental housing adopted non-step bathroom, which then became a norm in private sector housing. I mean private sector housing for purchase or condo. Otherwise, those who want to own their dwellings in uh, the multi-family dwelling will not buy. Even the well, low and middle income people with in the public rental housing has a more usable bathroom. Why should I spend so much money for an inaccessible bathroom? So that's what changed the people's minds, particularly the developers' minds. So that was good. But unfortunately, the possible merger of a toilet and bathroom area was not considered. We have the corridor in the center, and bathroom on one side and toilet on the other side, which cannot be merged. But because of the, the typical standard planning, that's very difficult to do. 
So the developers still make the bathroom and toilet separate. The bathroom is like this, uh, eliminating water channel. So dressing area, wet area, but re invisible water channel to trap the water overflow. Then the East Japan earthquake and tsunami. Emergency shelter was basically inaccessible, similar as before. Temporary housing, some improvement in accessibility, but not enough. Uh, the one of the requirements for the temporary housing is that they should be provided quick enough. So some uh, the, the units are already prepared in advance. So just, just, just immediately come from the warehouse once the uh, landlord is uh, designated. But those were uh, more a kind of uh, standard units, not considering the needs of people who are more frail, not for seniors, not for people with disabilities. Then, anyway, we have permanent housing for, uh, to reconstruct the old community. But this added difficulty, not just reconstruct. During the Great Hanshin earthquake, we considered the earthquake resistance must be incorporated. But with the tsunami devastation, we must also consider relocation, whether we relocate to a safer place or not. So to move to a plateau for safety. But it means for those who work in the seaside to commute to the seaside, particularly for fishing and fishing industry. It also means abandoning the old community. And it, it might also, it will also mean the financial burden to acquire a new land and to build a new house. And because the old landlord, uh, they are the kind of very prone to tsunami, the land price has gone down, so only the government can compensate above the market price. But anyway, the people have to uh, prepare the money to for the new house. So it's sometimes quite difficult. Or no relocation, rebuilding in the same tsunami devastated area. One way is ensuring safety with breakwater, but that can be quite high and can be quite expensive. And we are not sure if that will survive. And that, mean, that may mean isolated from the sea. So the, another alternative is that uh, the, you will build a house which may again destroyed by the tsunami, but you will have time to evacuate to a safe place. So assuming that they will again, the dwellings will again destroyed, you will make the dwellings more simple enough to secure the minimum level of living, but with uh, the reconstructed community. And the uh, every community is trying very hard to do what? Some uh, are arguing to relocate. <coughs> Some are insisting that they would like to stay in the original place. And so we hear news media, from the news media, that they are discussing. But we cannot intervene. I think uh, the, that's the issue that residents there will decide. So the answer to the, for 
try to a kind of compromise a new mindset. Mix of methods, fishing industry, being near the seaside is crucial. So the factory must be the, the port it must be there, the factory should be there. And so the uh, those who want near there will have a kind of temporary accommodation, functional with no frill, ready to evacuate. The permanent accommodation if they want it to have in a safer place. So commute during the weekdays and go back in the weekends, this is one way of doing it. And there are actually some ways of doing a very arrangement so that no frill. Uh, when I was working for the Building Research Institute, when I first uh, enrolled to the Building Research Institute, it was in Tokyo, inside Tokyo, but then moved out to Tsukuba Science City. It's about one hour uh, train ride to north. And on its way, we cross a very big river. And on the side of the river is a flood plain. And there, where the, this si on one side it was expected to be flooded when the, uh, the heavy rain comes. And there was no building, no buildings when we first moved. Then after some years, we had some dwellings coming down into those flood plains. But also we uh, saw that the factory was there. But I assumed that that uh, company has uh, well invested for the insurance. If the flood comes and the factory was flooded, then they will get the money back. And because of land, flood plant land is fairly very cheap. So they don't have to spend money for the land. So they have just uh, invest for the factory. And uh, the remaining money, it goes to the insurance company. So it's a good kind of uh, investment for the companies. But that's not a reasonable choice for the ordinary people for their own dwellings. Another example I noticed was with uh, a tourist attraction of volcano. Some volcanoes are known to erupt every 30 years or every 50 years. And at the time, all the, the facilities have been devastated, destroyed. But uh, we can see, uh, we can expect when the volcano erupts. So if it comes near, we just go out. So that is another way. Uh, the tsunami is uh, very ra comes very rapidly, and so that is uh, different. So we are not sure if, if that strategy will work. But anyway, that is one possibility. So I, I said before, the land loss, to acquire land loss, it will be very costly. And you have to spend another money for the building itself. So during relocation, as a relocation to own your uh, own dwellings might not be a sensible solution, in which case the renter's uh, dwelling is a more sensible solution. This may be by the private sector, or this may be more sensible by the public sector. So those are the possibilities. And we are not so sure who will choose which. But we cannot force them to choose, try to choose this one or that one. So conclusion. Universal design is not an ultimate goal. Rather, it should be a starting point on which additions and revisions be made. Because uh, in a sense, universal design, particularly for dwellings and buildings, it's a basic feature that should be there to functionally accommodate most of the population, from childhood to your adulthood to the aging 
here. But as, as your ability develops and deteriorates, it can vary. So we must expect that stage. But the starting point should be a kind of universal design which must be secured at one level, at, or at least at this level or that level, but not that level where we assume that everybody is robust, healthy and robust.